It's going to catch me probably talking to myself. Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode nine. We're on episode nine, I think, of Sean and Marco. In the morning, we've got... Today, we're going to be talking about... Thanks for joining us on this night. We started a little late, a little bit. Hey, Sean. Hey, what's up, buddy? Not much. Just uh, catching up on the movie, and I was watching the Apple keynote, uh, getting mm-hmm. all excited about new technology that I probably won't use to its full potential because <laughs> I don't edit video as much anymore. And, but, um, how you doing today? I'm great, dude. How you doing? Doing good. Just ready to get going on Wally. Going to rattle off some uh, some facts. The movie came out in 2008, graduation year for us. We're old, you see. <laughs> Titanic was called the Ship of Dreams, and it was. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm trying to think of, like, thoughts. And, like, it, I think what's really interesting about, um, um, what was it? This movie is that, like, even though, like, we're, we're too cool we were in high school we were still like i saw this in theaters i don't know about you but like all this stuff was still on my radar at that time i don't think there was ever really a point where i was like wasn't going you know um yeah i had a thought about that too um you know when we do the pizza planet truck thing we had a big uh, line of symmetry between us and andy and that mm-hmm. we felt like we we're the same age and really pixar if you kind of pay attention they're kind of, they're growing, they're aging as well. And like, uh, by the time you get to Wally, this is a movie that is very much so geared towards adults. Mm-hmm. Like very yeah. much so. Because I mean, a child doesn't understand the, the, the sequence of love that is, that is expounding in front of them nearly as much as an adult can. Because it's, it's, it's a 45 minute love story to start, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and, and yeah, so I, I agree with you. In the sense that, like, I was, I was definitely, it was on my radar for sure. It was, it was something that I could connect with again, and it was a trip because, I mean, it's Pixar supposed to be for children, and although this does have things, there's, there's aspects about this movie which would make it interesting to a child. I can't imagine a child less than ten years old really thinking this was their best, their favorite movie at all. This yeah, is much I, so for adults. Yeah, I think like there's there's some heavier theming in it, and I feel like it, it would be an interesting conversation starter with kids at the very least. Like I don't know what I would have thought of this movie as a kid. Yeah, no. like there there's I you try to put yourself in that headspace, and I'm just like, I don't know. Like I'm you know because like we grew up with like, um, like, like Grimm's what, what, fairy tales. Is what yeah, we like with, you know like that heaviest themed stuff we were probably watching from like the late '80s was like Don Bluth just trying to traumatize every single child he you know, came in contact with Land Before Time, (laughs) American Tale, all that stuff. And like, or, you know, but I think like Wally's, I guess like adult theme or just more mature themes um, are... It's a mature theme with a children's vehicle. Yeah. And I I think, I think it's, it's interesting because it's like, it's not outright scary in the sense of like shock value like a scary monster it's just this like like simmering foreboding of like what could happen and it's like and i think that whole environmental the environmental overarching environmental message is is handled in a way that's very you have to take responsibility for it you don't just leave a bunch of robots and stuff so um yeah they hit a good theme about that just to just i'll say it now so we can track back on it later but yeah, yeah. when uh our good little i don't know like the little thing they've ever done when he's looking at the plant late late in the movie mm-hmm. and uh he says he just needs something to take care of you and that's when he it clicks that that so that's what earth is just a plant just needs someone to take care of. why aren't we there taking a little care bit of, of it. tlc mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so uh but yeah let's start back at the beginning um not even just back at the beginning. I just want to talk more so, or also about the. There's an immense amount of just like really beautiful metaphors that are happening in in the way the story is told. Because I mean, the whole beginning of the movie, there's no there's no dialogue really outside of like beeps, and like boops. beeps, exactly. Wallies and Evas. You know what I mean? That's that's mm-hmm. all that. Those are the two words that are able to be said. And so uh, I I loved when he lights the lighter. And you see, like, the fire in his eyes, which is, like, a literal expression that we use, yeah. you know, to, to describe passion. And, like, all of a sudden, he's passionate 
about Eva, you know, and he, and like, I, I really wonder, I wonder a couple things. I wonder how old is Wally? Because mm -hmm. when they're panning over that whole opening sequence of Earth and everything, mm -hmm. the trash is taller than the buildings and the skyscrapers, you know, and that yeah. means, and it's Wally's that are building that, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. not, maybe not our Wally, but Wally's have been building that for a long time. And so I wonder, like, how Grand old is he? And so, yeah, and but I wonder, how old um, is he as compared to when did he start, we'll call it malfunctioning? and start acting mm -hmm. in this uh, personified way. So I looked up a couple of dates, at least based on the internal canon. Uh, the movie takes place in 2805, and Wally, in theory, has been running for 700 years. Now, when did when within that 700 years, did he get his little uh, personality quirk? Mm -hmm. Not sure. I probably can dive into this wiki article, but we'll just mm -hmm. uh, no, move home, I'd say. But 700 years... Yeah, yeah. And, like, it also explains, like, you know, not only did Wally become more human and everything, it, sh it explains how the crew becomes, they show, like, how they just balloon up and the bone density goes away. Mm -hmm. But over 700 years, that's at least seven generations. And normally you get about two or three generations every hundred years. So you're looking at, like, at least 14 generations, really, of yeah. people on a ship. That's wild. Yeah. I, it, it really brings up some interesting, like, when you watch the movie knowing what happens later, where it's like, oh, the hover chair was meant to be a mm -hmm. uh, a, um, a convenience for... Um, Elderly. Yeah, and it's Handicap, been... Disabled. And it, yeah, and it's been um, abused. And mm -hmm. the same thing happens with the Earth. Same things happen with, like, the, <laughs> the onslaught of advertising of by and large i mean that would look like what's happening before they it's they flew got, off planet do you, now i haven't seen much about uh it being i don't, actually, I don't know which one came out first idiocracy it's uh, got a lot it's got a lot of stuff that's real similar going on there you know what i'm saying idiocracy Where, like, was 2006 okay uh, so two years before yeah but i mean no one picks are they're working on this before before that comes out and everything mm -hmm. but still um like down to the Costco thing and how everything is run but ran by corporations and like mm -hmm. uh the stupidity of people once mm -hmm. we allow people like we sacrifice our our intelligence almost for comfortability yeah feel that like you, you you lose your humanity when you for a uh, convenience mm -hmm. of like the i mean i like the as much as I like the the drink, the, the drinks that pop out, I thought that was funny. But I always think about like. That sounds so gross, though. Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't it sound cheeseburger in a cup? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of cheeseburgers in a cup, when we were doing the Pixar in real life, and they had like they <laughs> were giving out shakes that were flavored, and I I didn't get to try them, but when they were like, "You want a hot dog?" I'm like, "Oh, oh man. man!" I don't know, like the phrase "hot dog water." mustard water it's just not it's just like you hear those words and you're like you know oh and then, my God. but then there's some that like you should they shouldn't go together like fish jelly but it it, it works no, <laughs> you know, I don't know. some dishes agree to disagree <laughs> there brother <laughs> but um, oh man yeah the the um the fast trends i thought it was great where it's like now the color is blue and just everyone i mean i wish that harkens wish my, me back to uh the whiz did you ever watch The Wiz? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I, um, I have. Sorry, I, I made it sound like I'd seen The Wiz, but I have seen the scene you're talking about. Yeah, and when you get to just, Emerald City, they get there and they're like, "Fashion used to be gold when it was bold. Now the thing to do is to wear blue." Emerald City, and it's just cool. It's, it's like it's such it's, a great sequence. Mm -hmm. I, I, I need to set aside time to watch that movie. Just you definitely do. Yeah. It's. I mean, it's a musical from the, you know, early 80s. So, like, yeah, it definitely, it doesn't hold nearly as well as some other movies and everything. But if you're looking for some quality Michael Jackson singing and dancing with Diana Ross and yeah. a couple other just heavy hitters, check it out for sure. I feel like, I feel like musicals, even, well, I would say even the worst musicals are fun to watch. Like, there's like, there's a, I always call it like the Mamma Mia principle where it's like, you watch Mamma Mia. And, like, mm -hmm. you can say whatever you want about, like, the production value or, like, the storyline and stuff. But, like, you cannot deny that every person on that film was probably having the time of their life filming this. So it's Just like there's some... ABBA. <laughs> yeah, and it's like there's some, you know, it's like there, there are films, I think, that exist in that, like, funny little microcosm. Speaking of musicals that I haven't seen, um, I've never seen Hello, Dolly, which is used quite... Um, yeah, frequently in this movie. And well, did you know, fun fact, real quick, let me interrupt mm -hmm. you real fast. 
It was. Let me see. I got it primed up over here. The I believe it was the grandson or the nephew. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Where is that? Beep, beep, beep. Uh, oh, wait. I had it primed up. Um, yeah, here it is. Thomas Newman, who composed Wally's score, is the nephew of the composer Lionel Newman, who happened mm -hmm. to score Hello, Dolly. And is the brother, I think, of Randy? Really? I didn't I know that think, part. I think they're in the... I, I think the guy... But that's cool. Yeah, it's it's an interesting, like, meta, 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 like, thing on top of another. And it's like, I feel like there's a cross-promotion here in that Hello, Dolly! is now available to watch and stream on Disney+. Plus. Then I need to set aside a three hours of my life to do that. <laughs> but it looks, I mean, it, it, I've, you know, they have, I think Hello, Dolly! was, like, talking out of, like, out of, like, non-experience and non-expertise. I think Hello, Dolly! was, like, the last big budget musical it was like you know what sunk the mu movie musical and that like it didn't recoup a lot of it mm. it's considered a classic and all this stuff but at the time it didn't it, you know the Do concept well, of, yeah like they i think they like constructed like, a the city block to like for sets and stuff and you know that, but it was right around the time of like yeah. mm. that whole like, beginning scene that whole beginning 45 minutes not scene is just such a beautifully shot it's all it's it's like a long short, you know what yeah. I mean? And it's so oh my god! Like we've all, I just feel like there's so many things in there. Like I was just watching, getting all emotional, and then I was looking at myself like, man, why are you always so emotional, <laughs> man? Like they just is it the movies or is it you? Anyways, I'll talk. To he my just wants about to it. hold hands. He just Dude, wants to be in a movie musical. We've all created a relationship that wasn't there. I don't care who you are. We all created a relationship that just wasn't there. You see the whole thing in front of you. You've got the beginning, the middle, and the end. Figure it out. And the person across from you doesn't know your fucking name. And you're just like, what? But I, but we were supposed to be. You don't see this? Yeah. I, I, I've got this whole romance here figured out. <laughs> I've figured out what we're going <laughs> to yeah. You know, like I'm gonna I'm gonna drag you around by Christmas lights, and we're gonna watch the sunset in the, over the polluted sky. And you know, it's a normal day in LA. Like, yeah, it looked, it, <laughs> the, the, the sunset would look beautiful over there. I bet for sure. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. then Eva's got some real Helga things going on, where like you know she's just just incredibly aggressive, you know, which Wally eats up. And I, yeah, he's so, I, he's, I, he's so starved for attention, he'll take whatever scraps fall from the table. Me too, Wally. <laughs> me too, dog. Let me tell you something. God, I, I, uh, I, I also liked how, uh, uh, how they tackled like there's a new sense of like realism. This whole thing, like, nothing like the they've already tackled. All right, we've got you know nature in the sense we've got grass and some tree kind of stuff going on in a bug's life. They've done the, the human room. They've done uh, underwater. We've done um, a make-believe fictitious monster world. Mm -hmm. And we've done, uh, what's the one I'm missing? And we've done cars in the sense that, like, like the desert, right? Yeah. And now we're getting, like, this post-apocalyptic thing, you know? And they've got desert down. So, like, all the sand and all that stuff part of this, it looks immaculate. It's beautiful. Holds up now. Came out, came out 12 years ago, 13 years ago. Still would is top notch CG quality. I felt like, um, and I, I I really really enjoyed like the intricacies of like the, because now they're going on to like it's going to be space is what they're gonna is what they're gonna show us next right. But they're just kind of getting us ready with Wally and how robot like and how futuristic and even though he's really rudimentary, he doesn't have any elbow joints or anything. He's just they they're getting you set up with his movements and everything for a new a new style something new, which is going to be this futuristic thing that Eva is the next bridge to. Mm -hmm. It's just, I, I'm, I'm looking at an article right now, just like talking about like just the color temperature adjustments, how everything mm -hmm. is like rustic and it shifts to, to um, very cold and sterile once they get onto the axiom, but then towards the end, the colors shift on the axiom. Well, when you see, when they take off from earth, you know what I'm saying? So the ship comes down, right? Eva's this really futuristic mm -hmm. looking thing. The ship comes down. It's real futuristic. It's real sleek looking and everything. When Wally gets on the ship to chase her, by the time the ship gets into space, oh, yeah. everything kind of starts looking like the palette definitely changes, but the shape of the ship kind of starts going from this real futuristic sleek looking thing to like a much more cartoony, bulky looking ship. 
right? Because the, mm-hmm. the, yeah. the thrusters kind of come back onto it, it becomes more compact, and mm-hmm. it starts to get you ready for the idea of, because we're going to be introduced to people, and to this yeah. point, the only uh, the only thing that's looked surreal in any in any uh, degree has been Eve and the and the bug. Mm-hmm. That's it. Every, everything else has looked incredibly realistic. Incredible. So I yeah. felt like that 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 right, like that going through space mm-hmm. was a a good like uh, transition segue. point. Yeah, mm-hmm. to, to get us ready for like the idea of like gummy looking people. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because otherwise, you I was expecting you were, I was expecting to see the most realistic human models we would have we'd have ever seen and mm-hmm. they went the opposite direction it, it's such a shock especially after being introduced to like when they're showing the videos and you're like oh look they're showing hello dolly they're showing they're showing the the president they're showing all these things and it's prepping you for like oh there's going to actually be like live action people how are they going to handle that and it's like it adds doubly to mm-hmm. that reveal it's it's there's all i mean it's like I know like a lot of the stuff that we're like expounding on is just like for some people like this is obvious stuff that happens when you watch the movie but being able to sit there and kind of parse it out it's such a fun oh fun yeah and, dude, I get and excited because I know I'm gonna come back and talk to you about it too so yeah while, while I'm watching, like, oh my god dude this is gonna be sweet yeah it's like when um when I was watching um um Wally to the, when I watched it uh, earlier today and then like thinking back on when I first saw it I think about how, like, um, the sudden that opening is and how it, like, builds you up to this, like, wow, look how beautiful space is. Look how free and open and natural and mm-hmm. this and that. And then it just brings you right you know, straight Earth. back to reality. Oh, there goes Wally. And it just, like, <laughs> there goes Wally. It's like... A, there's so much about like little shocks in this film and little mm-hmm. and and you you watch him just kind of you know kind of drive around doing his thing and I just love like the little little beats of like oh a wedding ring huh. All right, I'll keep yeah. the box <laughs> I love that dude because <laughs> like, like we, we, the idea of like you know what would be how would people like anthropologically how would you look at our civilization and everything mm-hmm. and like you know what looks more interesting the box or the ring yeah, you're like, well, whatever was, yeah, and like nine times out of ten, it's like this, yeah, the stuff that survives from ancient civilizations, it's like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you think about it, it's like, ah, the Roman baths, you're like, this is a toilet, this is a <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like, you know, the world's gonna end, and the only thing that's gonna be left are those, like, solid metal toilets that are at the beach, and they're like, yes, you see that the, the these thrones, were the thrones of Poseidon, the great thrones of Poseidon <laughs> that sat near the shore, and they, it's like, he had control over the metallic ore to create said throne, <laughs> he controlled the seas and the bowels of his people, he was a merciless <laughs> god, <laughs> just like, and over here, Poseidon, is no, <laughs> no. And to the right is the, <laughs> the the aluminum shack of Taco, and <laughs> they were built next to each other for convenience. For some reason, we are unsure as to why. <laughs> like, and and it's... <laughs> I wonder if the rest of the world recognizes that planet as Earth as quickly as we do, because it, it keeps showing um, the USA, America. Yeah, I, I I I think so. I think it would be pretty. Um, and I don't know if, like, think, because at first I was like, yeah, they probably do. But then my next thought was like, is that American of me to think that the rest of the world just knows what my country looks like? Yeah. And I think it is. <laughs> and you know what I got to say to that? USA! USA! <laughs> USA! Number one in a lot of things that we're not going to go over. <laughs> like, yeah. It, it, Number um, one in butter consumption. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Sean, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm gonna fact check that right. Now. <laughs> I feel like there's no way we're not number one in butter consumption. There's I, no way. We got to be number one in sugar, butter, and trans fats. That's my I'm, guess. I'm thinking like, well, who? I can't remember. Maybe China. Has, maybe China. Number so one that's butter. That's quali- sheer quantity. Let's see. Uh, butter per capita consumption of butter in America is six point two pounds. But what country consumes ah? <laughs> Cyprus, global capital consumption for 2018 is the highest capital capita Cyprus? consumption. Yeah, Cyprus. And they have, there's like literally less than a million people in, the, in that country. I guess it's just more butter per person. It's... Yeah, it's because there's less, yeah, they're on vacation forever. There's less than a million people there. It's an island. Yeah, for sure. 
<laughs> I feel like though, there's certain that's, I, like a, that's, that's literally a suburb of Greece. <laughs> that's the Greek suburbs. <laughs> we do, we eat more butter than them for sure. Per capita, maybe not. We eat a lot more butter than them. Yeah, I think it's what country? Let's see, what country exports the most butter? Oh, New Zealand. Um, oh, New Zealand. Okay. It's kind of, kind of, I know what I was wondering while I was watching the movie is that mm -hmm. when they're so like, dude, Wally's got some real dedication. You want to talk about true love. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like this guy's holding her hand. He, like that whole scene like where he's like, where she's um, gone in her directive mode and everything and he's mm -hmm. trying to hold her hand. He's protecting her from the storm. He's um, bringing her outside. He's doing all kinds of things with her. It's, that's mm -hmm. the effort, right? Yeah. But I really think the effort might have been shown to us far more when he takes the trip to the Axiom. And the reason being is they light speed jump back to Earth. How long was he holding on to that ship for? Because they're doing like a whole yeah. montage and he's going through nebulas, mm -hmm. touching rings mm -hmm. next to the sun. I'm over here like, he might have been on that for like a, a couple, it might have been years. Yeah, it, it might have been months. Been it might have been, I don't know. Somebody's probably figured this out. I'm going to type very loudly in the background. That's okay, but I was just there thinking about it because I was like, man, because they're not moving fast. Mm -hmm. Like, you watch that whole time, they're not moving super, it's not incredible speeds. And the reason you can tell is because there are points of reference. You've got the sun, which they're close and they're pretty, they're pretty close to. You've got the, when they're going by the rings, he puts his hand in the ring, so those would be stationary rocks. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So they're saying... So this is this is we're going deep on this. I'm I'm consulting plot explanation on a on a on a like almost a movie Reddit, but it's saying that if he's able to reach out and watch materials swirl away, they're moving at a slow enough pace on the on the rings. But then the shot mm -hmm. where they show the galaxy right before they approach the axiom is interpreted to be probably our galaxy, probably the Milky Way, which means that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, 40 years of travel. <laughs> but, but. How much do you love the girl you're crushing on right now? How much do you love her 40 years worth of holding on to the side? 40 years of holding on in the space. He didn't move. <laughs> He's just like. This was, all, this was his only movement over 40 years. Yeah. Back. But at the same that was time, it. But at the same time, too, they're saying that the plant hasn't grown or died during this time. So, they're thinking that maybe. There's some kind of Stasis subspace. Technology. Yeah, there's. Yep. I'd yep. like to assume that then, and the fact that the Axiom is able to get back to Earth in relatively quick pace, even as. It was a know. light speed jump they made, though. Oh, it took, yeah. You could tell it was light speed. The stars blurred as they took off. Yeah. Let's see. Traveling for 700 years. Yeah, it's. Well, I think um, the more I get into this article, the person is just acknowledging that it's like, if you really get into it, there's no way this makes sense, but just enjoy the movie. And I'm like, that's what you got to do. Well, I mean, Pixar has done that to us multiple times. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm, I, I always see, I like to see the plot holes and things, mm -hmm. but also like, I can appreciate a good old, just, just, just watch the movie. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I watched all yeah. the old Godzillas. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> they don't make no sense. Sliding on his tail and I love them all. Yeah, that's why I like <laughs> the new one with the spoiler alert when the thing happens. You know what I'm yep. saying? When there that happens go. and the yep. tree. <laughs> and the and dude, well, the tree part actually was really dope. But yeah. I'm talking about later on when the other thing happens and you mm -hmm. see the one part when one thing comes in, you're like, what? Mm -hmm. You're like, yeah. That part, I was like, and like the way that thing moves and all that stuff, I was like, <laughs> let me tell you something. I, uh, I'm down with this. I don't care. You don't got to explain it. Just, just let this be. We're good. Thank I think you. we need to we need to review every movie like that. You know when the thing happens and that guy yeah. says that thing hey, and it's so funny and like if you watch the movie, you follow that verbatim. <laughs> yeah. All right. I know you did. Okay, because that wow. <laughs> Anyways, Godzilla vs. King Kong. Go watch it so I can talk about it on the podcast. I just need them to make it into a ride with the with the thing. On the on the oh uh, yeah, on the thing. On the thing. Yep. I almost I was that close. I almost I almost said it, Marco, but no, on the thing. <laughs> That's right. Ah, that's um, so okay. Um, um, the Axiom is huge. Yeah. Compared, because like the ship that comes down is mm -hmm. very, very large. You yeah. Know, very large. And so to see the Axiom and it just plug in like it's nothing, mm -hmm. it's like probably like what we'll say like one, basically one like 50th the size maybe. Yeah. 
It's supposed to be, let's see, an incredibly detailed size compared. I'm going to the Smithsonian for this. Sorry. I'm, like, I'm, mad. I'm not mad at it. I want to know. <laughs> let's see. So they're showing it as I made a mistake of setting up my phone in front of the computer. So I'm like, <laughs> Uh, okay, there is a giant chart that I can't. Okay, I'll just look up the numbers. The axiom total length is a uh, fifteen thousand feet long, four thousand five hundred meters for our friends on the metric system. Fifteen thousand feet long. Huh. It's seven thousand feet tall. Wow. And, and it's oh wow, this is a on a. <laughs> I am consulting a live journal. <laughs> five thousand yards. Uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, Five thousand. Let's see. Total length. Or is it three thousand yards? No, five thousand. Let's see. Since the axiom is large. Hold on. I'm trying to find the. Aha! Here is the chart. So the uh, that is a very small chart. So they're showing the axiom being about. Oh, it's actually pretty small compared to these other ones. But we'll just, we'll just. Uh, it's huge, though. Yeah, it's a it's a huge ship. It is. It's a city in space. Mm -hmm. It's that's um, no moon. <laughs> that's no moon. Yeah, they're cool. showing it as like four mm. times as tall as Burj Khalifa, the tallest building on Earth, mm. and like okay. 20, 20 cruise ships long. It, it's a big boy. He, or don't mean to assume it's a big ship. It's a very big ship. The scale in this whole thing has been nuts, man. Between how yeah. big the axiom is, getting to fly next to the sun, mm -hmm. seeing just all all of the interplanetary stuff we saw on the way over, it's it's you're you're starting to feel smaller and smaller. I didn't realize that um, the oh, I was thinking about scale. Scale. Um, I always thought Wally was smaller, mm -hmm. but then when you look at it, you're like, he's he's a good sized little robot like he's he's like an ottoman bigger like he's like a couch yeah oh like definitely that. he's like a, he's like a love seat he's a good size yeah. little you know and i'm just thinking about my friends with who his, built with like, his uh with his eyes up he's mm -hmm. basically he's up to he's probably about five four he's like a well he's like a um with eyes up you know what i'm saying like it, it, with his head up and everything i think he's probably about five four because like when he's a cube i think you're looking about ottoman style yeah yeah he's like I should look up his height. I'll look that I'll up. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. I got you. <laughs> and it's it's like it's interesting because it's just fun where it's like interacting with a robot that large. But for some reason, I thought of him as like a suitcase when I saw the film. Because I'm like eighteen inches. Not that tall. He's eighteen inches height tall and fifteen inches wide. So he's almost two feet tall and a little over a foot wide. Yeah, he's like okay. That's not too bad. Yeah, because I remember when yeah, I watched it, I was like. Tall. I was like, that's a big cockroach. His little buddy is a... Yeah. Dude, the He's cockroach a... gags are wonderful, dude. Gets shot in the head. Nothing. <laughs> and I love the little... Squished flat. <laughs> Chilling. Just... Yeah, that little sound effect when he, when he like, bounces back. That's how you gotta, you gotta be in life. Just boing. <laughs> <laughs> you run over by something. Boing. Get crushed by a rocket. Jump up. Um... I, I think what's neat with the movie too is just like there is a lot of story that is told through, you know, you're just inferring it. You're seeing the advertisements for going off plan and you're seeing the, you're realizing that there are a, an, an immense amount of time has passed um, during the film. And it's, and like dust storms. That, I don't know why dust storms are something that scares me, both from Mad Max and this, and, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, sorry, jump into the axiom. Um, I don't. I think the concept of like artificial days in space mm -hmm. sounds like that's just one of those sci-fi concepts to me that I'm just like, ooh, I don't, <laughs> like it makes sense that you'd have to do that. But I'm mm -hmm. like, oh man, I don't know if I'd want to do that. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it's uh, it's uh, you go crazy, right? You have to. Yeah, yeah. But I guess they got it dialed. The robots got it dialed because everyone's brainwashed. Mm -hmm. it's, that's how they're keeping you in. It's like they're not, there's never a time where they're not looking at a screen, which is telling of how Pixar felt about screens back in 2008. Mm -hmm. That's where we were back then. We didn't have, we barely had smartphones at that point. That was sidekick times. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they're already saying like, yo, we're, we're on the path to be stuck on our screens all the time. Right? Yeah. And it's like, I'm curious as to like how, 
<laughs> how like current generation or like you know it's just how they would um interpret this it's funny i should like talk to like my younger cousins be like what do you think of this movie <laughs> they probably like i don't know marco <laughs> like stop asking I really, about these movies <laughs> i had when i first well how about i see this because when you're first brought into the axiom and you're seeing it and you see like you see ads you see i think it, it shows the first time you see a person is when they start to kind of si- siphon in with the robots a little bit with Wally on the little track and everything. Yeah. So when you first start seeing people, what are your first thoughts? I, I mean, at first it's like, it's, it's a mixture of like, I remember when I first saw the movie and I was like, Oh, that's kind of interesting. But then I was like, it's, it's played for laughs, but it's played for like this uh, like uncomfortable laugh, but it makes sense. Cause you're like, everyone's using hover chairs that you wouldn't be, you know, you would lose bone density. You would lose. Um, mm-hmm you know um appendages but you haven't got they haven't given you the explanation yet you know what i'm saying yeah. you're just imagine that scene boom it starts putting you into it and you look up and it shows the whole thing and it cuts mm-hmm. back to people again having conversations what are you thinking um just it just it's i mean i guess i thought i thought of it as a gag i thought it was mm-hmm. like funny I think it was more just like, oh, okay, I guess that's the direction they're going, you know, with it. And Yeah, I no, it... I I hear you. Go ahead, I'm sorry, keep going. No, no, you're good. That's all I got. <laughs> it definitely did feel like a gag, too, especially with, like, how plump they were and everything. Yeah. My first thought this time going through was pandemic. Yeah. Because, like, everyone's just stuck. Like, she's talking to somebody else on, like, on mm-hmm. Zoom. Everyone's just looking. Like, everything's screen, 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 screens. Nobody's really interacting with each other, even though they're right there. Right, it's but, almost yeah. as though they're like quarantining themselves. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It just I had this real this real pandemic vibe going on in that very mm-hmm. beginning where I was like, yo, it's like they told us what we can and can't do. Like they're not even using the pool and stuff. It's so yeah. so it gets I'm just saying it really hit me just like that. Like even though I guess they could use that stuff, they did and they could they didn't. I don't mm-hmm. know. I wonder how it be how it got to that too. Like yeah. I, I've, I wondered that back in the day, and I wonder it now. Like, the 700 years, mm-hmm. what happened? You know what I mean? Was Otto's takeover of the ship gradual? Was mm-hmm. it, you know what I'm saying? Did any of the captains know at any time? I think I think that's the thing, is that, like, it, everything about this is so gradual. This is, like, mm-hmm. the the autopilot taking taking control of ever so – at a rate that is, you know, go, I mean, he's been – been with how many seven eight other captains so mm-hmm. it's like he's taking his time he's got yeah. time he's a robot got, yeah you know got all the time in the world and so too like i think too it probably just shows i think like if it was if there if there's a there is a deeper commentary too and i think one of the things is that it's like what we consider to be normal is ingrained and it is it's ingrained over time and mm-hmm. what what is considered like that's how we've always done it had to start somewhere and and that and how damaging and how um unhelpful that mm-hmm. phrase is well we've always done it this way that's why we're doing it and it's like there's always a, yeah it's a, the whole like it's human nature or it's just the way it is it's like yeah. yeah but i mean we kind of the best part about being a human is we don't got to abide by those rules we can just mm-hmm. be different now yeah and and so it's like i think it's just i think too like the the thought of like anyone can kind of deviate what is considered normal and it could have like big changes it could it could usher in uh culture changes and Mm -hmm. i think i think it's a i think it's neat that they keep coming back to that couple you know that Mm -hmm. um, john and mary yeah and just like just their little adventure where it's like oh they were talking oh they were oh they're 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 bonding over their their you know enjoyed their tandem amusement of Wally and Eve's adventure, and then like there's even shots where it's like it just uses a transition shot where it's like they're playing in the pool, and then the robots like, oh, I love don't that. don't do that. They <laughs> kick it, they kick the ah, water. And then, and then you're like, yeah, you know, you get your robot, and it's like so it's like I think it's it's. I, that was the perfect spot to, because like, you got to find a Ratzenberger little joint. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You oh, got to yeah. find a little spot. The same way you got to find a little place to put some pizza pan truck, which they did, and they did a wonderful job. Loved it. Yeah. But uh, we'll come back to it in a little bit. But just Ratzenberger as like his little Easter, because he's an Easter egg in himself. That mm-hmm. was just. Mm. And hey, it's, it's Wally. <laughs> um, go, touching on the cast a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, Jeff Garland 
as mm-hmm. the captain. Yes. I gosh, man, he's got such a genuine sense of like care in his voice. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like he sounds like like a dad who wears sandals and socks mm-hmm. and is looking out for your best interest, buddy. There's like um, there's a there's a um, like forcefulness underneath it where it's like you know this guy can will fight for what he believes in but there's like yeah he's this like approachable Mm -hmm. you know and and (laughs) i was gonna say like i was gonna do like a wizards of waverly place references be like yep shakira himself (laughs) 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 yeah and and like we got fred willard we've got sigourney weaver making her first well that's a that's because i guess uh what's his name who directed this uh, Andrew Stanton. Andrew Stanton is a, said that uh, a lot of his inspiration for directing this came from the movie Alien, mm-hmm. and so that's why he decided to pick Sigourney Weaver for for that whole thing. And she's a wonderful mother, if you will. Yeah, I mean, I think like we could replace Siri with Sigourney Weaver and just be like, "Hey, Sigourney." <laughs> I <laughs> wish. I friggin' wish. Hello, Sean. What about uh, we, we, you? Haven't said the the main, our main man, Ben Burt. Mm hmm. Voice of Sound Wally, editor extraordinaire. Mo and R two D two. That this like they. I think this what was interesting too with like bringing in Ben Burt to do the sound editing, and to do like they they um, consulted Deacons Roger Deacons to do um, like a lot of cinematography stuff. Is they're very they're trying to really truly plant this as if it were a live action film. Just there's mm-hmm. just like. You know, when you're watching Wally, there's this like mild, like documentarian camera mm-hmm. to shake to it. And like they're doing that drop off, they're doing the depth of field that is realistic to, you know, that world. Yeah, and if and, someone like, was there. Yeah. And it's like just, just the menagerie of sounds that Ben Bird like concocted to in this movie of just like, like Wally has this like, he's, he is a future technology. He's a technology we've never encountered before, but there's this like. He's a 700 year old teenager. Yeah. And it's like, there's this cuddliness to his beeps and boops and his, you know, just the whirring of his wheel of his treads. And like his, you, I mean, like he's deviated from the original Wally intent, but like his little, like, blah, like there's a scream to it. There's this organicness to it, mm-hmm. but it's, you know, even the little Macintosh sound, startup mm-hmm. sounds there's just so much character from like a pretty limited amount of sound effects. A hundred percent. Yeah. And then, uh, Elisa Knight, I think is the voice of E. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And that's, I mean, she's a, she's a voice actress and she works such a warm, warm tone to her voice. Yeah. God, I want to give her a hug. It's, it's like they're, they, they really, I mean, we're we're still expounding upon the care that they take because, of course, they they took care of making sure that like these components were like the best they could be. Well, and, also, yeah. like you you touched it, he's only got this small amount of he's pigeonholed himself to be a robot, right? I mean, mm-hmm. Ben Burt, and so he knows that he's I've been mean, as versatile as he is, and he can take he can take one word Wally and make it mean fifty things and make a yeah. language out of the word Wally. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And it it works. And then part of the th- thing is is the marriage between the animation and the sound. In the mm-hmm. sense that like there's so much animation to Wally's face for it to be a, it being a robot. Just with the way exactly his little eyes, the angles, kinda... and all that. It matters so much. The height in his in his uh, in his neck matters Posture, so much. Like... The posturing of the uh, of the it all it all plays so well, and it makes mm-hmm. it like. I would have I would have really loved to see the storyboarding process and how they animate different uh, uh, emotions just on a storyboard to make mm-hmm. him look different ways because they really bring it to life on the CG screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just um, one of the facts I was reading was that like the average film has like seventy. It said like seventy five thousand storyboards, and this one had one hundred and twenty five thousand. Oh where just like God. they had, they did so many deep dives into concepts, and it's like how they wanted it to look. And just, it the 
the making of of this. There's probably. so much more post-apocalyptic stuff that we don't see. That's all in that storyboarding stuff. That I would love to know, like the stuff, the universe building of this world that they've made and everything. You know, because yeah. like for real, there's we're in what looks to be a metropolis. So we're, we'll mm. call it in L.A., San Francisco, uh, New York. Uh, somewhere it's it's got that vibe to it, right? Mm -hmm. It's at yeah. least a downtown area, and so we're talking like buildings, like tallest ones, at least say fifty stories tall. Okay, mm -hmm. and there's trash going above that to where mm -hmm. it's a building and a half the size of that. Yeah, it's it's, it's that the the time lapse when they show Wally building that foundation. Yeah, you're just like. Uh, you get a sense of like, okay, so a day makes like three quarters of a foundation and you're just sitting there and like they, they, they're stretching time. They're, they're, they're. And then did you see the way that, so when he builds it, he creates a path to be able to go up and down it and everything. So then yeah. I started looking, surveying around the other ones and you see there's paths up them all. I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, it really was just a Wally that made that. Yeah. A, a it... few Wallies, you know, like. It's 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 fascinating how like by speeding up time you're able to get this sense of how much time has to elapse for all these things to occur. It's it's all these complicated things like it's it's just so brilliant. It's just so neat mm -hmm. and it's like I, I it must be so fun to have those breakthroughs storytelling wise. Oh yeah, you know? um, and it's just like the sense of time that, the, you know, like we were talking about earlier, where it's like 700 years and this and that, and it's like, it, it makes you think farther ahead. It makes you think about like, how are things that are happening today going to affect things down the line? And you start to like feel incredibly small, but also still hopeful. And I think that's one thing that this movie does very well. Cause a lot of other films might be a little bit more doom and gloom and like nothing you can do about it. Yeah. And I, I think um, there is, um, it's just it's brilliant what they did yeah it's just like the amount of storyboards that we never see they i wonder god man that would be so pixar could totally do something with that just in releasing their art to in some sort of in some medium because there's so much cool this nemo had to have been just wild to see some storyboarding stuff on yeah uh monsters inc i'd love to see the storyboarding for that a lot Toy Story three storyboarding was must have been wild. Mm -hmm. oh, it's yeah. just it. They're I mean, like they they release like a limited amount of like storyboards in the form of yeah postcards, and you're just like these are good ones, but then it's like I want to see the crazy ones. I want to see, see the, the collection. You know what I mean? They yeah. have the collection. They've got it down. They got. They, I want to see what the war room looked like. You know, well, like the amount that they throw out. Like if you, there's there's crazy clips where um. In I think like Waking Sleeping Beauty, there's a clip of they're like they're showing like a hundred drawings and they're like, "Yep, all in the trash," and they just throw them out. And you're just like, you know, that, that, <laughs> it's like, and I get it, like it's part of the process. And the, there is part of me that it's like I would love to be able to like, but kind of the same thing. Like we're kind of looping back onto this with Wally, where it's like you want to save everything, you want to like look at it later but at the same time there's a point there's a there's a fine line between archival collecting and hoarding mm -hmm. and um it, it's just where does well, that go what do you do like i mean when you think about it wally is is highly malfunctioned he is he is doing the opposite of his directive you know what i'm saying he's got a whole cache of things that are not smushed and compacted and turned into a giant leaning tower of Pisa. And that's not, that's, that's against the directive is not save things. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The directive yeah. is, this is trash. Get rid of it. Hold on, I'm checking something. Marco has uh, an essay due in about 10 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I do. So, I am on my last, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm on my last two weeks of class. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But also I'm not. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Um, I'm ruining the audio unless someone really, no, no, really no, like that. likes like, someone really likes um, so ASMR. Yeah. Hi, hi everyone. Hey Sean, what did you think of Wally? Was it really good? Did you like the lack of dialogue? It was kind of neat. I liked the lack of dialogue because it really made my heart feel warm. Yeah. Let me here. Hold on. I gotta while while you're talking, I'm gonna like rifle through some papers. I have to like 
hold on. I'm gonna light this cigarette. Oh yeah, hold on. Wait, wait. I have this. I have this Velcro, and I have to pull it off incredibly slowly. Hold on. Hold on. Anyways. I've got this bubble wrap. I want to take care of. Check it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh... <laughs> uh... <laughs> that's not the ASM. These are not the ASMR jokes. Over there, Sean? What, kind of, what kind of crazy bubble wrap? You have? What kind of gas did they put in this bubble wrap? I don't know. It's crazy. It makes weird noises. <laughs> um, so once they're on the Axiom, I think it's interesting, too, that you see how robots that do malfunction are treated differently than how they would be on Earth, where there aren't people. Mm -hmm. And, like, there are some robots where it's like, oh, that, that umbrella is opening a little aggressively. And then you have the, uh, the massaging robot that will murder someone. <laughs> Dude, that massaging robot. <laughs> Be ready to He's square up. up. He's like, let's go. <laughs> it's my guy. You want a massage? Come here. Shout out James Dulac. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely like, a massaging robot. <laughs> things and like, I just love Take that. Take down Thursdays. Just like a chainsaw, <laughs> like chainsaw sound effect when that robot's going. Um, I love it too because, like, okay, so those are all the malfunction robots. We've been introduced to Mo, right? Mm -hmm. Who Mo has to follow his directive, and he's following his directive to now a malfunctionable degree. He is now mm -hmm. off off track. And I was thinking, like, Mo is like if you because Mo, like, Mo is the first character you're introduced to outside of the robots and uh, and uh, the bug, and so mm -hmm. like immediately. He's given personality, and he's given he's just given a, a lot. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Compared to everybody else, he's get, he's got more screen time probably than John and Mary, or the captain. You know? Yeah, yeah. And so uh, when you get Mo, he starts. You get to watch his. He has a whole side story of mm -hmm. him becoming his own misfit toy, malfunctioned robot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because if you look at him at the end, he's covered in dirt. <laughs> yeah, he's. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he's like the clean robot. Loving That's like it. His thing. Yeah, he's yeah. like, oh, we in it now. It's, it's, it's an adventure <laughs> robot. I just, I love the little names of all the characters you've got. Wally, you got Mo, you got Bernie. <laughs> Wally, the, little, the yeah. big ones. <laughs> e. Oh, Gopher. I hate Gopher. Gopher is, <laughs> Gopher's cut, dude. I thought for a second while watching Gopher, I was like, oh, he's going to turn. Gopher's mm -hmm. Otto's little, this is little Igor. We don't like it. We don't yeah. like, he has a little... <laughs> Thing. Yeah, a little, <laughs> and like, uh, what, were the, what were the names of the giant Wallies in uh, Wallet? Yeah, those are Wallets. <laughs> Sorry, when you were saying Wall, when you were saying Wally, I thought you were talking. You were thinking like the rapper. <laughs> yeah, I was like, <laughs> all right, songs are getting all rapper dappy again. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I think about like so my, I have some friends who are in the Wally uh, Wally builder community. And they've made their own little remote control wallies, and they're the coolest things you've ever seen. And I'm thinking about how they kind of they've pretty do... functional, right? Oh, they're they're fun. They have the little they they beep, they boop their eyes. They do the reset, the whole reset protocol. They, That's tight. Um, It'd be cool if they could really compact too. That'd be next level. Yeah. The um the, the thing I just I, I'm just thinking of this funny idea, and it's like this is something that wouldn't would never be needed. But like a couple years ago, they a few of them were commissioned to make a. Uh, full-sized tread of a sand crawler for Star Wars Celebration. I'm just looking at Wale, and I'm like, man, that'd be a really neat thing to build in your backyard. Just nuts. this giant, terrifying sentinel robot with, with like, yeah, the floodlights on it, where it's like, oh, if a cat comes in your yard, <laughs> papers, please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Enter that cabin. <laughs> Dude, that could be that wall. If you were to build a full-size Wale, that would be a amazing like uh like man cave mother-in-law <laughs> so okay, follow me on this follow me on this okay okay right? follow me on this okay so you get on the star wars ride right mm -hmm. and you you're on that the, you go through the whole line take it through boom they give you the speech you know you're part of the rebels now and you walk outside and all of a sudden you're you you go into the little ship or whatever and it does this thing and you pop out and poof, you're on the Axiom. And you're like, yeah. wait, what? Oh my See, god, I'm supposed to be on Star Destroyer. You're on the Axiom, yeah. you go on the ride, you go on the little thing, do the thing, and then where there should be a, an AT-AT or mm -hmm. an ATST, there's a Wale. 
Bam. See, what, what I think is so fascinating, and this is a really funny, I'm, I'm going off on one of my rants, but that's why you're here, everyone. Thank you, fellow listeners. Um, I'll keep, I'll keep it cool, quick, I promise. One thing that I always find really interesting about theming anything Star Wars as in world, like Star Tours works to me because you are presented as a tourist, you are going to these exotic planets, and you're getting out of there. And one thing I find really interesting about Galaxy's Edge, theming-wise, is that the Star Wars universe is not a universe you really want to be a part of unless you are a hero. Mm -hmm. And so I just find it interesting. Like, you know, Harry Potter, it's like, it's, it's Twee London. It's lovely, cute London that happens to have wizarding wars going in it. And then it's like, <laughs> Star Wars universe is like, unless you are rich or a Jedi, everything is pain. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> welcome to our town on Space Route 66. It's very sad. And it's like, I don't know if, like, like bring your family here. Like, you know, theme park gaming. Like, so, like, I know that the Axiom, at the same time, has these thematic issues that if you were to build it in a real space would be tough. But I would love to go to an Axiom-themed yeah. hotel. You, like ship. you said, in yeah, space. It, yeah, it would be, it, it's... It would be interesting. It'd be really fun. I feel like that would be a beautiful foy because there's so many hotels that are built like that. Also, this... Marco, real quick, mm -hmm. we're yes. opening the door for drinks in a cup again, and I, mm -hmm. I, I think yes. we got to be careful here because this yeah. is a slippery slope. I don't, I don't want my 700 year old cupcake in a cup. Not what yeah. I'm looking for. You know, I think cake in a cup would work, but that would be like a milkshake. Mm. I think it's once you start getting to like, I mean, protein shakes are always flavored to be not their their dairy if they're protein but then like you, you're never gonna get a meat shake you're never gonna mm -hmm. get like a at least i don't think so but like a savory when you get like a savory hold please yes <laughs> type into meat shakes oh god <laughs> yeah, you're going you're looking for oh, a savory. Yeah. oh yeah i was gonna say no i was thinking like oh yeah meat shakes is what you get when you eat too much meat meat sweats meat shakes um the i i don't know it's like there's there are some foods that like you realize how much your taste is real, how much taste, is, how much taste is just flavor. Yes, that is the definition of taste. But like <laughs> when, you, when you get like um, a jelly belly, like when you get a, you get those jelly bellies that shouldn't taste like, you know, popcorn, like it breaks your brain. You're like, mm, I'm eating a jelly bean, but it tastes That's like popcorn. True. And like, I I once made the mistake of, um, did I ever tell you about the, the worst mistake I made in a movie theater? Mm-mm. I went to see... Wait, wait, wait. Tell the whole world. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> so there was this one movie I went to see. It was really terrible. No, um, well, I did see Epic Movie in theater. That was a terrible film. But um, I once made the mistake. I went to the movies and I bought some candy and they were offering like a upsell of like, if you pay a dollar more Harry Potter stuff, you can get a box of Birdie Bots's Every Flavor Bean. And that was before they firmly marketed that as like a game it was when they marketed more as like, you should have this. Ha ha. There are a few tasty jelly beans. Eating Birdie Bots' every flavor beans in the dark when every other one is just vomit is just not a good idea. Like thinking back, it's one of my like poor oh, decisions. Boogers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you so get one good. blueberry, you know, alas, earwax. My boogers yeah. tasted way better than their boogers. <laughs> <laughs> they just, <laughs> uh... so I'm, so I'm super out. They're good. They're gonna oh, yeah. Sean, we need some of your boogers so we can um, improve the flavor. Can you Sean, we're eating? trying to improve the flavor for butt. Can you come in? <laughs> <laughs> what, what you trying to say, Jelly Belly? <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine Hard being bad. the taste tester, the, the recipe? Like, who are you? I'm the head chef of the Birdie Bots Every Flavor Bean here. This is I'm Ralph. I'm executive <laughs> chef. Where do you work? Birdie Bots Every Flavor, flavor bean. bean. And just like <laughs> being the head, like, head taster or head bird like he's just i just feel like that guy would just be like be a dude like with he'd be like pig pen there'd be like one cartoon fly above his head uh, it's like he'd be sponsored by he'd have a, a jacket that says tums because he's sponsored by it <laughs> tum, 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 tums. um back to the movie um i think the whole sequence of so i i think I'm going to like downplay the sequence, but I'm going to make fun of the sequence because I love it so much. Um, mm -hmm. Putting a Wikipedia deep dive into to music is such a great little moment. 
All except of the like, questions you know, he asked are like, very thought yeah. out. Yeah, there's 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 this wonderful like yeah you would realize someone who hasn't probably used his legs in a while doesn't know what dancing is what it yeah and it's just like mm, it's just earth fine dancing yeah the or the way they just the the earth segue was was wonderful because I mean like mm-hmm. what is this it's it was four things he'd never heard of and the last one was earth and he's like wait a minute I know that word buzzword and it pulls him back and all of a sudden he like like it because it's dirt. Like nobody gives a crap about dirt, but it just it just took him into a whole whole lane of things, and he gets you know the whole yeah. Austin Powers treatment. Yeah, and it's like it's such a great little sequence. It's just so fun. I'm gonna and be it's... so sad for him when he realizes that you can't just grow pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I know that that that's a true tragedy. It really is, dude. Because it's gonna be a long time till they can get pizza going again. It's just gonna be pizza in a cup for a while, guy. Sorry, yeah. they gotta learn how to make yeast. Yeah, it's like, and, and like, they're, when they get back, like, I'm jumping ahead, but when they, when they get back to Earth, and they have to start cleaning up, and they have the credit sequence where you're seeing things kind of slowly build in art style. Which so. was, but, which was absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Like, I love the, the switch in art, like you're, like you're alluding to. It was yeah. such a, oh, it's, it was really, because the movie, to the point, had, like, we talked about it in the beginning, it was geared mm-hmm. so much for adults, everything was so hyper-realistic. Mm-hmm. And so then to see now a much more, an even more, you know, adult-centric theme in the end, because a kid, once again, is going to have no idea what they're looking at. They just see pretty colors and a robot and robots on the screen. Yeah, but I, us, we're seeing a synergy, right? Mm-hmm. I, I think, like, as a kid, you would, you would understand progression, but you wouldn't understand it. Like, that, like you would see these concepts, and you would, um, you know, it, it, you, you would, you'd be taken on this journey but you wouldn't register what was happening until someone like said see this is a caveman drawing and this is a this mm-hmm. or like eventually or like they'd slowly piece things together and that's just learning and growing up and it's just it's such a neat thing to like film film and media as a form of like learning and opening doors for people to like learn about concepts and it's like i get it like you you're gonna watch a you're gonna watch a biography film about someone and it's obviously not going to be definitive. That's not the point of it. It's telling this specific story. But if that opens doors for someone to dive into it, yeah, it did its it did its piece. And I think that's that's really fascinating. But like watching watching them like rebuild society, it's interesting thinking about like you you're able to like have this little out of body experience while watching the film. At least I do, where it's like you place yourself in that situation, and it's like okay, if I was brought back to Earth and it's covered in trash. And we have to clean up. What do you start first? Fire, or where? You know, what do you? What is the first concept that you have to reintroduce to someone? And do you ever have it where I don't? There, there are sensations where it's like I'm sure that they have names for it, but I'm going to just talk about it at great length because I don't have the words for it. Do you ever have it where you, in when you see or encounter or experience two people with, with you know, different languages? conversing because there was a translation available and you, you think about that and then you kind of like zoom backwards and you're like the fact that that can happen all of the steps that led towards that of different countries and societies like like there was a time where they didn't understand each other and like that process of understanding must have been like so like that's what I'm thinking about when I'm watching that end portion is it's like everyone relearning things like I, I get it like it's a all English speaking ship coming back but mm-hmm. like like having to coordinate those kind of efforts, I think would be is really fascinating. I just think that's really. I was really fascinated with the idea of all the robots. If they don't follow the directive, they're malfunctioning, and now the everything's different now, and so their directives all go out the window because yeah. they're all going to be asked to be functioning outside of the ship. And mm-hmm. so you're seeing like the dummy waiter is like heavy lifting for them in the credits, and like yeah. uh, the the dude that was outside that was like drilling stuff. Mm-hmm. In the beginning, he, now he's over here, uh, and he's planting, doing mm-hmm. the same motion. You know what I'm saying? Like the the new utilization of all. And you think about like how much they'd have to use robots to rebuild Earth because yeah. because of the bone density loss, because mm-hmm. the fact they're all fat now and stuff. Mm-hmm. And like you see, by the end of the credits, there's like stronger looking people working with the robots, which I thought mm-hmm. was also pretty cool. Yeah, it's just just having to relearn all that process and and everything. What it's about just, the other ships, Marco? 
Yeah, so they um, they do show other axioms landing in the credits, question mark, I think. I don't remember. I didn't see that. Let me double check. But um, I'm assuming that axiom or that by and large was probably by and large is a very American company. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that where is that thing I'm looking for? Beep, hold on. Um, that um, there had to have been other companies and other other um, you know countries flying off planet and just that that like that effort would have been interesting yeah. it's um but let me see let me see let me jump to going through screen caps really quickly they do show or maybe they just only show one hmm, you're right you're right i think i don't know why in my head i had this like shot of like there oh, the were coming down yeah. yeah or like eventually coming back but i think like i think the story though very much is there is one ship that's rebuilding this little corner of the earth and i think mm-hmm. that's um it's a bummer too because that plant in the shoe could have grown even bigger had they just taken it out of the freaking shoe stunning yeah. its root growth dude yeah it's just <laughs> yeah it just stays in the shoe the whole time wait a second what i'm just saying like, they show it later on and it's grown to be really big and healthy but i'm just saying like if you and you know, the roots are going to find their way outside of the shoe to mm-hmm. a degree but also, they would just do better if they could just branch out without oh, having yeah. to go through a leather shoe. Mm-hmm. Nutrients. Also, leather shoe, dude. That's a that's an old shoe for when this took place. Yeah, well, the yeah, old style so, shoe, at least. Yeah, it's a old like. Yeah, it's a really old. But like, even the um, the fridge looked pretty like mid century. So. Um, yeah, there was a what else too? There's a Rex toy in his stuff. Yeah, there's another Rex toy. What was the? What's the? Is there an up reference in here? That I didn't see. Ooh, uh, up I, is next, right? Uh, let me check. Let me check. I think. Um, ooh, I forgot what it was. But I, I hold on. Give me a moment. I will find. One in between. Um, up, up is next. Um, and the reference for up is. Uh, slash film. Here we go. Hold on. If it's up, if it's up, and it's up, and it's stuck. Can we come out to the Up and It's Stuck song by uh, Cardi B for Up next week? <laughs> we can't. If it's up, and it's up, and it's up, and it's stuck. <laughs> I don't, I'm not seeing uh, any song these days. Fun fact Ben Burt. Our voice of Wally, we talked about all the sounds. He created a library of over 2,400 sounds for Wally, the yeah, largest of yeah. any number of his first films by far. Yeah. Um, Among the sounds he used are an electric toothbrush, shopping carts banging together, a Nikon camera shutter, uh, Bert sneezing while a vacuum cleaner was running, and <laughs> a hand cranked generator of sort. Used in the John Wayne film *Island in the Sky*. Let me consult the. I'm gonna jump into a. I'm gonna type for a moment. I'm sorry, fellow listeners. There you go. Um, let's see. <laughs> More than Groot inflection language. <laughs> yeah. 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 Dude, I, for sure. I mean, I think Vin <laughs> Diesel. Ben Burt, they're, I mean, although they're similar, more ASMR. Right, <laughs> Wally ASMR would be kind of fun to kind of rolling along. <laughs> That'd be really cool ASMR. Um, so I guess the humans were originally going to be jello blobs. Mm-hmm. After talking with a NASA scientist, Jim Hicks, an expert on the effects of zero gravity in the human body, Stanton was going to make the humans literal blobs so that they would be so unrecognizable from who we are today. Even the audience would think it was an alien race. And it'd be like a Planet of the Apes twist when you find out they're actually humans. <laughs> do, do, do. You little mound of jello hitting the floor. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think all of the creative decisions in it were like, you can see how it would almost get off track with that. Or like, you, the realization comes so late in the film that now you have to watch it again. But I think like mm-hmm. the... Um, 
I, I I'm trying to think of like there were any things that were like funny, like little funny thoughts that you know when you're watching it, and it's like I don't know. I just mm, I let me see. yeah. I I do think it's I think it's fun that there's the like two thousand. I got one. How the heck did Wally survive that explosion? Mm. It's self destructed. He just had the thing, and he's like, you know what? I'm cool. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm thinking we've got like a robot John Wick over here, where he's just like. <laughs> that's the. It, it, <laughs> that's how, Sean. You didn't know that's how you survive explosions. You just like get a fire extinguisher and just <laughs> fly away from it. Smokey the bear powers activate. <laughs> yeah, I'd like. I'd like to think that like when the escape pod well, here's explodes, a metal scrap. I like that. Yeah, I think like I, I'm. I'm thinking. I don't know. He probably. I feel like he's a robot of impeccable, impeccable timing, or. Oh, um, and you know what it might tell us? Hmm. So, we Who's... got we got the wood carver. <laughs> yeah. We got Mater. <laughs> Jack Jack, credible. Where's Wally in this equation, bro? He's indestructible. I think Wally. Indestructible. So Dude can here's... hang out. He's over seven hundred years old. <laughs> I'm older than this. Time year. can't take out my man, bro. Time and explosions and fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers only increase my power. <laughs> like... His only weakness is a wheel named he, Otto. But but the other thing too is like Wally is effectively immortal by by harvesting the parts of his fallen of this... brethren. Like he's, yeah, he's, he's, he is. He's like a jellyfish. He's effectively like. Yeah, this is nuts, dude. Wally might be. He's is Wally top five? I think Wally might break the top five. Does he? So do we have top five? So we got we got well, we got the woodcarver because she's just a witch. And she just does whatever. is the OG origin, so we got to yeah. give her because she's the power. Yeah. I, we yeah. and number two was. Oh oh wait okay so so we've got, Mater, Mister Incredible, Jack Jack, and then Remy. Remy's down lower because he's not going to use his hair pulling powers and might not his hair pulling powers may not work on other people. We have yet to be. But he is a rat, and that rat power does give him a lot of. He's got a lot of elusiveness and whatnot. He's not easy to get. Yeah, I I feel like like Mister Incredible would have a hard time taking out Remy. Real talk. Yeah, and like I don't think Mister Incredible could like squeeze through a hole that's the size of his skull, like the shoulders. Jack Jack. Chin. Jack Jack takes out Remy quick. Oh yeah. Jack Jack is, you know, Jack Jack probably could like become like the local pest control person. He does not mm-hmm. seem to enjoy the. Uh, well, really... you saw the raccoon. The raccoon oh, scared yeah. Jack Jack. So yeah. I, I feel like a raccoon is <laughs> even more. Well, I guess not more elusive. The rat's more elusive, but still, Jack Jack made the sight work of the fuck of the raccoon. Mm-hmm. So it's I would put. I would definitely put. Uh, I think I'd put Wally above. Ab- above. Remy, but also depends on the on the setting. The setting. situation. Basically, we've learned that that Wally does Wally can travel through space, bro. He has a laser between his eyes. He cuts open the a laser fridge can... like it was nothing. <laughs> that laser was OP for sure. That laser's kind of it's, and he only Dude. uses it once, right? I think, or maybe twice, and not, not like for evil. Um, oh, yeah, I don't know. Bro, oh, that's nuts. I didn't even think about that. The laser's nuts. The laser I think it cuts like... it cuts in half. Yeah, like clean, it's clean and, uh, lightsaber. That's a lightsaber. <laughs> Wally's got face. a lightsaber on his friggin' face, dude. <laughs> I think what's crazy too to think about with these the the most overpowered or the most powerful characters in the Pixar universe is that none of them. Well, Mister Incredible and Jack Jack are the only two that are like actually power battling, throwing bows and stuff. And like you know, I don't think I think you really got to push Wally's buttons for him to laser you in half. Like you gotta. All you gotta do is is kidnap Eve, bro. See kidnap what Eve, turn off Wally. See what happens, turn bro. Off, turn off Dolly. Wally. Essentially, this is the story of Super Mario Bros. It's <laughs> Wally, aka Mario, and his brother Luigi, aka Mo, and they gotta go get the Princess Toadstool, aka <laughs> Eva. <laughs> Bob Hoskins playing Wally, and it's going <laughs> Wally, 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 Wally. Just talking like a well, well, and then John Leguizamo as, as... rest in peace. Bob the, Hoskins. the movie, the movie was so bad, bro. It was I, okay, so here's bad. the thing with that. I can't movie. believe that John Leguizamo said yes. I know I it was the early Bob beginning. Hoskins said yes. Dennis uh, Hopper, Dennis it's Hopper, so said yes. bad. 
So that the movie, Bowser, yeah. it's so bad. I like the the TV show was bad but good. <laughs> yeah, they had their little like. There, there was a time in my life. I want to say it was between like being six and nine, where I put my parents through the the gauntlet for terrible films. And I, you know, like the, the older I grow, I look back on like different parts of my life differently. Like I look at this out of, you know, like when I went on a school trip out of state and I go, there were eight adults for 50 middle schoolers I'm sitting there going, <laughs> what did they do to deserve that? <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, like if there is one example of teachers are not paid enough, it's that <laughs> alone. Big facts. <laughs> like, and so like, I look at that. And like, I think about that. And then I think about like the movies that I attached myself to when we would go to Blockbuster. Did you ever have, did your parents, when you went to Blockbuster, like, I don't know if I'm like showing my suburb, white suburbia card. Did you ever have it where like you would go back and like every like year you would rent the same movie because you really liked it, but there was no way to get it because it was such an old, it was out of print. Did mm. you ever, or, did you ever have like your favorite movie that you, or yeah. the movie you'd watch like yeah, more than all once? The time. And mine like, what was nice, nice. See, like mine when it came to Blockbuster, and this is what's so bad, is there are two films of probably equal not great quality that involve characters from properties being sent to alternate or other dimensions. Now stay with me here, because this is a, this is like a really bad double feature. So the first one was the Felix the Cat movie. <laughs> you've ever seen that i've it's, never seen i love it, felix the cat though i'll send it to you and you tell me if you, you we'll, we'll do a bonus episode on felix the cat the movie and that Oof. you know how there's you know how there's a certain type of animation style where like there are if it's a well-written film there can be pauses like wally there can be pauses and moments to breathe and absorb and then there's the flip side of that where the character never stops talking and it'll be like a long shot of it walking through a field and the characters are going, wow, look at the sun. Oh, I love the sun. Look at butterfly. Isn't that cool? I once met a butterfly once. Yeah, we didn't really agree at a bar and we started fighting and they just like go. <laughs> like that's what Felix the Cat Felix, is. Oh my God. And it's like they get, get sent to this like dystopian universe. And then same as Super Mario Brothers. Like that's another movie where it's like they just get sent to like. <laughs> that was on my home. list of movies I watched all the time too, man. Yeah. It was bad. I was like, right there with you. Like, I don't remember very much of that movie. Like, the, I remember the Goombas were just gross. Like, I just didn't like them. And, like, I get it. It had, it had that, that it, 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 it fulfilled its original purpose. The one gag that sticks out to me whenever I think Super Mario Brothers movie, and I thought it was so funny when I was little, which is so weird. I guess this shows how my brain works. The little bomb mm -hmm. that they use, I love the gag when it you know, walking along and then it's upside down and they zoom in on its feet because it's wearing Reebok. <laughs> <laughs> what are those? <laughs> I don't know why whenever I do that joke, the water those. Because they're in New York. Me. Everything's different now. <laughs> yeah. But I just love that he's like, he's got Reebok. Like, <laughs> like I feel like. That was a big thing. Reebok was really big in the getting in the movies back then. Yeah, it's just like, I just thought it was just such a funny gag. It was like, oh, he's wearing Reebok. It's like, I, 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 I'm surprised that there aren't more, like, that would be such a fun, that would be, a, oh, yeah, sorry, I would make that face because I'm thinking, I know it's, it's just me doing my thing. I, that would be such a fun firework. It would be such a dangerous firework, too, where it's like, here's a ba bomb, ba bomb, and you, <laughs> you light it, and it just starts walking. <laughs> You know, you can make it out of like cardboard and 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 things and yeah. Marco. <laughs> yeah, you are right now in this moment promoting bombs. <laughs> well, you know, like like for fireworks. children, basically for fireworks. You're for you're fireworks. marketing it to kids. That's you're what marketing bomb bombs. Yeah, oh, you, you, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's fine. It looks look good. Look you ever, like, I mean, did you guys ever child like... proof child proof twist? <laughs> <laughs> did you ever um? Uh, when you were younger and playing with fireworks, did you ever vaporize a penny using sparklers? No. That's okay, must have just, fun. I just remember my friends and I, we did that once. It takes a lot of them, but you can vaporize a penny. If you just... <laughs> it's like... Yeah, Marco, think about that, bro. You're telling children to vaporize <laughs> yeah. pennies and to, yeah. and to make bombs. We're looking for bombs and pennies. I didn't say make them. I'm saying 
mass produce them and sell them <laughs> to children. There's a difference, Sean. There's a it's capitalism, difference. Sean. Get your head around it, okay? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta harness millions. it. <laughs> to the moon! To the moon! <laughs> See, that's a phrase, that's a phrase that Macho Man Randy Savage would have and should have and could have said. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to 100% to the moon, brother. To the moon! Those going to the moon, Sean! You gotta start investing, man! <laughs> Let Looking me tell you about creators, brother. Game the dark side, side the right. light side, all the sides of the moons. <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street starring, starring uh, Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> we should just do like, we need to do a series where it's just Macho Man Randy Savage like rereading. Um, oof, sorry. I, I forget that doing that voice and doing the Batman voice make me really lightheaded if I do them wrong. It just hit me. Um, <laughs> That I think like Macho Man Randy Savage like doing like good colors like as far back as I could remember I wanted to be a gangster and this Tony Bennett starts playing it's like <laughs> Tony Bennett da, yeah da, 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 da. Da. you know and it's just like just redoing Goodfellas except it's Macho Man Randy Savage as Henry Hill <laughs> like... with the uh, the face swap technology they have now you could really oh, we really could, do that yeah we could we could uh, deep fake that like... for real um, is there anything else in the movie? You want to talk about? You know, I think the only way that this movie could have been improved is if Macho Man Randy Savage had provided the voice of Wally. I think that's it. If Wally! There was 2400, Wally! If there was 2,400 Macho Man Randy Savage drops in this movie, yeah, it would have been... You're right, Marco. If it Wally did the flying elbow... The it's <laughs> Off the top rail, it's Wally with the flying... <laughs> Elizabeth! <laughs> if you are if you're watching this and you have art art background please redraw wally and eve as macho man randy savage and miss elizabeth <laughs> oh my god and we will Dude, put remember that... no elbows no elbows. wally no yeah. elbows <laughs> Can't have elbows. He's got to you gotta give him give him the things. Give him the goggles. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and, it's it's like, and give him a little skull cap with the hair coming out. It'll say um, <laughs> it'll say Madman across his eyes. <laughs> like all the crazy. Skin. That's so good. Is Please that the do. first? Is that the first like Sean and Marco in the morning merch where it's just like that'd be wow. so good. Just a family Chosen portrait. One. Chosen one. Hook me up with one of those. I want a Macho we, Man Randy Savage Wally shirt. We gotta do that. Chosen one and. And Sean and Marco in the morning, first first collab. We Macho need man. It. <laughs> I, I'd wear it. I'd wear it. It would start so many conversations. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. There is getting back to where you were saying though. Uh, no, there's nothing extra um, for the movie that I can think of. Like the end credit song is fun. Uh, Peter Gabriel. I just I want to make sure we touch on, dude. How I know we're gonna go to Pixar's romance, just like creme de la creme. Mm -hmm. masterpiece and up next mm -hmm. but if there's if there is an easter egg for up in this it's that it's a love story mm -hmm. this is a, a love story through and through it's told so beautifully yeah. it's very much so easy to connect to you you've got a lot of different characters hitting it from a lot of different angles i i i really enjoyed the payoff of the hug in the very end when they're holding hands mm -hmm. it really I, it, it it read so well, and it's st we're still in, we go back to that mode of there's only two words able to be said: Wally and Eva, boops and beeps, and it reads incredibly well. I love the idea of the timing of everything with Eva when she finally realizes that she loves Wally. It's too late. It isn't yeah. that about the truth, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like the way things kind of work out, and that yeah. timing doesn't always work out the way you want to. But I will say I love this as the happy story, happy ending that it is. And then it's a love story about Wally and his girlfriend, Eva, and they end up living most likely happily ever after. Yeah. And that's, it, I, it, I read through to that. It's like a, it's a, it's a, it's the prototype. It's the under 3000 with like, mm -hmm. just like uh, building off wow. of that. And like it, you, yeah, it's like robot, robot goals, like a mm -hmm. couple goals. Robots. For real. Yeah, like, and it's to the point where like Wally pours his heart out to this to this robot. She doesn't understand him. Mm -hmm. She doesn't. She doesn't want to understand him, but she doesn't understand him. She doesn't understand what she has in front of her. She doesn't understand that you know the the honesty that this robot is giving her is something mm -hmm. that she won't find anywhere else. Mm 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? She doesn't under and then Wally doesn't understand that in reality you're you're giving yourself up to a fruitless mission here, dude. Yeah. He wa- he wins out in this, mind you. You know what I mean? Yeah, because it's... love wins and that's the lesson here. But also mm-hmm. it's not it doesn't go this way very often. Wally's the last of his kind, you know. Mm-hmm. All the other Wallys don't get a girlfriend on the way out. Mm-hmm. And it's just like yeah, it, it's it's such a hopeful and like uplifting like movie and just like Eva's stronger than Wally. It just hit me. Unless wait a minute, I don't know what her battery life situation is like. Yeah, can Ooh. she be rebuilt from the fallen brethren? She might be up there though. She's definitely up there because like that there's gun. a But then Wally can make use of that gun. Well, there's a lot of like um um hold on, let's see. There's um there's a lot of um points in this movie where you're you're shown um what type of um power that eve wields because like she'll when she like bounces in the in his little like container um the weight you know, that she has that she is yeah she's that. just like you know she like flings him flings him out of the <laughs> into the stratosphere almost to the moon mm-hmm. and it's like um there's an or when yeah just her spinning like she i think she's it's it's the rattlesnake thing she's a baby rattlesnake mm-hmm. in that like she doesn't know her own strength and then, but like she's precise wally is wally is like a tank he doesn't go very fast but he's gonna get there in one piece and then like eve's like a jet <laughs> like mm-hmm. a precision you know yeah um yeah she's probably she'd break in the top 10 i'd say probably eve's like got, six, eve's, six yeah, or eve. seven I don't know yeah. who's stronger between Eve and Wally because Wally's also there's things Wally's lived through that I don't think Eve could. Yeah, I I, I don't know. Like we're talking like power, it's, raw power. I think it goes to to, to Eve. Eve. Yeah, but I think like hardiness, like you know, like the that cockroach. Um, who's gonna survive a nuke? Like, can Eve? Would Eve be able to? I guess she would. I was gonna say, would she be able to repair herself? The way that Wally can? I think so. I think, like, just with her hands being able to... She probably has, like, surgical, Mm -hmm. um, you know, precision. But then at the same time, like, I don't know how readily she could, like, replace her parts like Wally. So Wally's, like, a little modular dude. So, like, Mm -hmm. head-to-head... Like, head-to-head fight, like, her laser versus Wally's shell. Like, even Wally knows that, like, he's not invincible. He's mm-hmm. digging down when a rocket's trying to land on him. He knows he can't. He he shouldn't stay out in the dust storm. So it's, but also too the 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 situation in which they would have to fight. I bet you those dust storms were really wild for a while, and that's yeah. why that's why there's no other Wallies. Mm-hmm. Not why, but it plays into why. Yeah, yeah. Just dust dust in the the mainframe and just, just turn off, turn off again. You know, get a little can of air. Wally dual wielding cans of air, <laughs> and then clips it upside down, <laughs> sprays the leg of his friend, <laughs> and that wakes him up. Oh man, the cleaning robot crew must have gone nuts when they landed. Oh yeah, contaminate, contaminate. Panic. The whole planet's a contaminant. Planet must be removed. Um, uh... I'm trying to think of fun memories of this movie, or like things like I feel like merch wise, it's only recently that the merch has really come out. Um, I uh, my I I saw this movie. I went on an outing with a friend, and I just remember that they did not like the movie, and it like ruined the whole outing because they were just like ragging on it the whole time. And I was like, "Well, I'm not friends with you anymore." <laughs> yeah, it feels weird. But um, I'm like, "Yeah, don't be friends with them." Don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know where they are. They're off somewhere, just hating Wally. That's all I know. Um, but did you watch the short Presto? Uh, yeah, I remember that little, little rabbit. And the and this little portal hat. That's such a Dude, fun It's probably my it's my second favorite. Only reason it's not number one is because I think Jerry's game is just so innovative at like oh, for yeah. what it did. You know? Mm-hmm. It it made Jerry's game made enti- like all of us look at each other like oh when it first came out. <laughs> yeah. You know? Trying to figure it out. Like was it one person, was it two? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it was a whole thing. And this one was <laughs> the first time since then where I was I was sitting here literally laughing the whole mm-hmm. time, like out loud. It was it was really, it was wonderful. I just like the the various ways in which, like, you know, he turns the hat sideways and he sticks his finger into like a. It, it's it's 
Pixar, a lot of the time, doesn't get a chance to really show off their slapstick and old time cartoon chops. Mm-hmm. But you know, they're 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 steeped in that history. So when they're able to really stretch their legs on that, it's it's so fun watching them. Just like have a good time. It was wonderful. Yeah, I think I think I'm good. I think I'm good with. I've, I've said my thoughts, and you've you know, said your piece. I've said my piece. Okay, you can't handle the scanning, truth. Scanning my notes. Is there anything I see? See that uh, the elbows rule. Wally was come up with the idea for it. It's going to play a baseball game based on binoculars. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? The name of the cockroach is Hal after Space Odyssey 2001 and the Krubik thing. Oh, we saw a uh, pizza on a truck when she's looking for uh, for. Oh, her yeah. Director. Yeah. Well, let's get back to this. Yeah. Uh, it's all rusted out and really sad. Um, it, the but the Pizza Planet truck at, lasted about. <laughs> yeah. It's all oxidized. Pizza Planet everything. truck lasted like. I know who knows how long it's been sitting there, but it's still in one piece 700 years later. So I'd like to think that there's a little bit of uh, that spirit imbued in our. I will <laughs> say our that truck. our rocket now resembles this rocket most of all of the, the rockets in the Pizza Planet truck history. This is yeah. the one that looks most like ours. And I don't mean that because it's 700 years old, although that does help our case. I do also mean it just because yeah. like, the shape of the fins and everything is much more accurate to the rocket that we have going on. Yeah, there's like a pockmarked sensor. There's a beaten upness to it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I um, I think what's really funny is, and I know I keep saying it, I need to do like a deep dive and deep explanations on like how the stylistic changes in each of the truck occurs, and mm-hmm. like how you can tell they're some of them they're regenerating, they're, they're recreate, they're creating a new model, and then some they are recycling models, and then some they're taking the. It's it's fun. It's it's. Really it has neat. has a uh, side view mirrors that are pretty similar to ours as well. I'm looking at. Yeah, the the um, for the most part, like I think the biggest um, tangents divergence from the main look of it is um, probably up coming up. Probably <laughs> Will, uh, in, in, Oh in yeah, up, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very small, and you you can see it, but like it's it's very boxy. It'd be very troublesome to make a truck look like that. We um, got a couple A one one three. Oh yeah, call it references too. Mm-hmm. The directive or the the, the mm-hmm. error code for for uh, autopilot. Yeah. Um, I think, I forget where the Luxo ball is in the movie, but I feel I like... I want to say it's in uh, the trash in the beginning. Yeah. Let's see. In the background. Well, I mistyped Wally, so I put Wallale. Wallale. Let's see. In Wally, it is... Oh, it doesn't seem to. That's weird. That can't be right. It's probably somewhere. Hmm. Well, that list is uh, incomplete, I guess. Um, yeah, so fun little movie. Next week, we're going to be watching. What are we watching? Up. And we're going to cry together. And, uh, yeah, dude. I'm, that- I'm low key not looking forward to this one just because, like, I already know how just open my heart is going to be to this movie. All right. Yeah. Up is going to bring your tissues, folks. Yeah. You're going to need it. There, I have some fun fun stories about it. Just, here I'm really hoping that there's a squirrel in the middle of this podcast next week because <laughs> I don't want to cry that much. You know what I'm saying? I'll, 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 I probably have a stuffed squirrel, like not a, like a, like a taxidermy squirrel, but bring a squirrel. Every time we get too emotional, we'll just squirrel, talk squirrel. about something different. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think if anyone has any questions in the next two minutes, we're going to keep talking for a little bit and uh, you can send them in if they're relevant. That before, I didn't really look at much of the stuff that was going on. I think we no, there's a trolling action. Yeah, they, um, <laughs> we'll figure that out. But um, yeah, any relevant questions to Wally or the anything Wally adjacent um, in the next couple moments? But um, yeah. Spring is here. Spring has sprung. It's getting toasty out in SoCal. And, uh... It is. Yeah. But, I um... really get a bunch of... We, um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of other things. Uh, our, um, for those of you that are tuning in, 
and are tuning in live and may not have this open of a schedule over the next couple months, uh, we are now uploading the Instagram lives as in the form of a podcast and it's being distributed by Anchor, which is a neat app, which we'll, you'll hear, you probably heard in the ad earlier. But what's good with Anchor is that it distributes it, distributes it to most uh, podcast providers. So we got Spotify, we're on Apple, we're on uh, Overcast. Um, and so wherever you get podcasts, you probably can hear us and listen to us on yeah. the commute. Just check us out. Search Sean Marco. Sean Ampersand Marco, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll find us with Sean and Marco in the morning. Um, I've been checking us out on Spotify, just kind of listen to the way I sound and everything. Mm -hmm. I want to sound better for all of y'all. And uh, yeah, man, if you have any any if you have any suggestions or anything you'd like to hear more about or anything like that, we're always open to that kind of stuff because mm -hmm. we want to make a good show for y'all. And honestly, this is just a lot of fun for us. So yeah, cool. I think that is a good place to end. Um, Solid. Yep. Yep. So good talking with you, Sean. And you too, uh, brother. we'll hear from you next week with Up. Squirrel. What's up with Up? Squirrel.